ourselves another episode 10 cut content from Mr. Baseless Upen. Let's see what he has to say about the most recent Classroom of the Elite episode. Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 10 This episode actually surprised me because I was really liking it and the He should say this episode really surprised me because I had no expectations and it disappointed me even further. Episode actually looked pretty damn good. Okay, okay, never mind. Especially compared to Episode 9. Things were honestly going great until they ruined one of the most impactful there and it is. iconic moments there it of is. one with a single line. Anako just should have said, spread your legs, Hirata, but he didn't. Ruined it. Along with completely butchering Hirata's character. So, without wasting any more time, let's talk about all the Ooh, cut content Koenji. and changes for this week's episode so you guys can understand just how great this part of the story was. First up, we're honestly off to a pretty bad start because the anime completely skipped multiple chapters and since I well, the anime skips multiple volumes sometimes. I mean, it's to be expected, right? If you don't want to make an hour long video, I'll be going over what happened in these chapters in a condensed okay. form, even more so than usual. Starting with the anime cutting out a lot of class discussions where Class C decides on their events and participants, along with classes trying to stalk each other for information. Basically, the special exam was a lot more important during this volume compared to what the anime has shown so far. Next up, we have another scene of Michan chasing after Hirata. Michan deserves so much better than Hirata. It's gonna kill me that Michan keeps doing this shit. Now, Hirata did apologize to Michan, but ah, it's just like. Michan Koenji's ship isn't an actual thing, huh? I just got hyped at him carrying her. I don't think there's anything romantic between them. Nah. No, Koenji was just kind of flexing, but like, Hirata Michan, is that really gonna be the shit moving forward? He did apologize, and I feel like Michan's just. Michan's just too thirsty over Hirata boy. After they both leave class, Horikita decides to go after them, but the one who actually stops her is Kyo. He oh. tells Horikita that she shouldn't be the one chasing That's not the ish. Do you think that you can really fix Hirata's problem, I asked. Well, someone who thinks neglecting him is the best course of action isn't someone who should be chasing after him. <laughs> well, I mean, he always has a separate plans, right? After him, because she thinks that neglecting him is the best course of action for she didn't, didn't Susanne kind of want to do this to Sudo in the beginning? He just wanted to neglect Sudo and say, you know, fuck that guy. He's such a piece of shit. I, and that, that was like after like an apology to Sudo too. He just completely gave up when he like, quote unquote, got into a fight. Now, after Kyo catches up to Michan, we get some more characterization from her, which really shouldn't have been skipped. No. Well, Kyo asks her why she doesn't leave Hirata alone. Why doesn't she? And I was like, is this her defect? Like, why, why is she in this class? What's wrong with her? She's cute. Some people say they hate her fucking voice. It's really high pitched. You know what? The more I think about it, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Some people are like, you know what? Fuck Mi Chan. Mi Chan's annoying. And I'm like, that's so mean. And then I thought about it and I'm like, maybe you're onto something here. I don't hate Mi Chan just yet. No, no, no. She's fine. But it's like, what's her defect? Is, did she have like the syndrome of I can fix him to like the max? Is that why she keeps chasing after Hirata? Is that her defect? What and is it? Mi Chan's Giga Chat response is that. It's precisely because everyone is giving up on him that she doesn't want to. Everyone's saying that we should leave Hirata Kun alone right now, but I think that's wrong. I think it's exactly when someone is suffering, when they're in pain, they have to help them. She's just good, you know? Mi Michan's just an angel, huh? And she even says that she doesn't mind if Hirata hates her as mm. long as she can let him know that he's not alone. Ah. <sighs> Is Michan kind of like Hirata too? You know how Hirata is just like a fucking doormat and was willing to get stepped on all the time? Michan's kind of doing the same shit, huh? Is this really like the doormat couple? Is, is that what this is? Next up, we have seen where Kyo runs into Hoshimiya Sensei, where she- Oh, look at this, Hoshimiya Sensei. Oh, me? I'm an unimportant teacher. If I do have some information though, I absolutely won't tell you. Instead, I'll fucking flirt and groom these schools, the students here instead. He interrogates him about his dating life. Kanzaki! Hold up, hold up. I, 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 I heard about, you know, the dating life. Hold up. Kanzaki has a line here. He possesses the highest level of intelligence and reflexes of any student in class B, which is crazy because Kanzaki gets no recognition. He speaks in a calm, indifferent tone, yet there are things he's passionate about too. I wouldn't fucking know who is his character from anime, right? Because the anime hardly ever gives him scenes, but hold up. As long as she can let him know that he is not alone. Hoshinamiya sensei? Next up. We have seen where Kyo runs into Hoshimiya Sensei, okay. where she interrogates him about his dating life. 
along with telling him a story which implies that yeah. during their time at the school the dorm rooms were shared between two people instead of everyone having their own room they fucking everybody is there instead of there used to be roommates and then and wonders why kyo isn't dating anyone you'll regret it if you don't wouldn't it be better if to fall in love now while you have this chance she added wait what in the world was this person babbling to a student Someone who should normally be devoting themselves to their studies. I was well aware of the fact that they were all kind of teachers out there. But in some way, she might be the kind I'd never seen before. Yeah, she deserves to go to fucking jail, dude. Imagine if 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 this teacher was a guy and, and a guy teacher was like creeping up to different girls and be like, <laughs> you got yourself a boyfriend? Ooh, tell me more about it. It's like, Ugh. Despite having a space where students could meet one-on-one -on -one privately in their own rooms, and Kyo wonders, what hmm. the hell is she talking about? This man was genuinely Baby wondering making. what the hell is wrong with her. Moving on, we have a scene of Ayano Koji group having lunch with Ichinose and a few other Class B students. Here, Ichinose talks about how a few of Class B students are being harassed and stalked by Class D ever since the special exam was announced. A particular one that stands out is hmm. Albert silently cornering one of them. What? Wait, 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 wait. Are being harassed and stalked by Class D. Alberts stalking and harassing each of us. That is that why Albert has not been in the scene last couple episodes. Every time they show, you know, the Class D people like uh, Ryuin, Ibuki, Ichizaki, Albert has been missing in action. So I was like, what's going on here? Why, why the fuck are they removing Albert from the anime during fucking Black History Month? That's pretty racist. But then, maybe it's intentional. Albert's actually onto some shit? Ever since the special exam was announced, a particular one that stands out is Albert silently huh. cornering one of them. Like, it's just such a funny thing to imagine. <sighs> I heard Beppu was near- Who's Beppu, dude? Nearly scared to death when Albert silently cornered- Okay, him against the wall. Well, what if Albert's gay and wants Beppu? I don't know. Where are they going with this? Is, is Dr. Albert, is creepy Albert an actual important thing? It's just such a funny thing to imagine. Ichinose says that there hasn't been any physical confrontation yet and wonders what exactly is Class D planning by doing this. I don't know. They also talk about some other things and when they're about to leave, Ichinose ends up looking at Kyo in the eye and gets flustered. <laughs> Kyo wonders why Ichinose has been acting so strange recently. Because you broke her down. And she is just, she, uh, she pretty much spread her leg open for Kyo, right? Like, she's done. Like, Ichinose has completely folded. Does, does Kyo not understand what he's done to her? And also notices a citrus. Thank you so much, everyone, exclaimed Ichinose. As she did so, her eyes met for the first and only time that day. In that moment, she casually brushed her, 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 her hair away from her face. As if carried on the wind, a faint citrusy scent tickled my... So she's flexing her shampoo, right? This is aromatherapy tactics, right? She quickly looked away, returning her gaze to our group as a whole. Each no say was really was uh, acting strange today. Not that I was going to point that out right now. Hmm. I thought that Koji was intentionally doing this. Rizzed her up. And I thought he was manipulating her like that. But maybe he's a little dense, even though his social game is getting better. Is, is he just dense here? A scent coming from her. Which is actually quite a big meme in the community, so it's really sad it's getting cut. After that, the Ayano Koji group stumbles upon. Fuck you, Susar Sakura. I do like Haruka though. Haruka's great. Ek asking Shinohara out on a date. What? So e e we we did hear that Ek had some some like summertime flirt session with uh Shinohara, right? I think I was skipped, right? Uh, I, I thought Ike Kushida was gonna be like the actual meme shit, but Shinohara Ike, it's a thing. Uh, th did it work? They also find out that he managed to get Valentine's chocolates from Shinohara. He got chocolates. He got chocolates. Hey, uh, uh, on, on Sunday, are, are you, you, you know, you, you, you know, for, for, for free? He asked. Sunday? Well, uh, why? Uh, well, it's a. Uh, it's, it's it's just. I I don't know. I um. I I I was wondering if maybe you'd want to hang out or something. Like like we could, we could go somewhere. Riz. E K. She know how to Riz. <laughs> that's, that's a couple. Really? I I kind of wanted E K to you know get with Shamashira or like <laughs> Kudi Kushida, but she know how to really. Okay. So he's asking her out for a white day. Next right. up, we have a Kushida scene. 
supposed to be EK's boyfriend. What? I mean, sorry, girlfriend. What's going on? After classes, Kyo chases after Kushida, trying to get some information out of her. Kushida gives her usual smile and says that she doesn't feel like helping him. But <laughs> Kyo thinks that deep down oh. she's fucking pissed at Hori. What light novel cover is? What light novel illustration is this from? Is this basically what Basis you been saying? Saying like, you know, Kushida got approached. Sorry. Uh, and of course, you got approached by Kushida. And Kushida had like a happy face on. But, but this is how she's actually feeling right now. W what is this scene from? This, this is an... It, look at her hands. She does look like Ryu and dude. She looks like she's about to fucking palm strike us actually. What, what's she doing, bro? Horikita for pretty much exposing her to the entire class. I tried to imagine what Kushida's true personality looked like that she kept hidden underneath her mask. That bitch! I gotta die to kill her! She humiliated me in front of everyone in class! I never ever let that go! I kill her! Kill, kill, kill! I'm going to completely destroy her! Shine! Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring back the, uh, I'm gonna bring back the Doki Doki Literature Club society voice for all the girls now, yep. And Kyo's imagination of this is just insane. Really wish that this moment didn't get cut, especially huh. because they showed this scene in the season three trailer as well. Why do they keep doing this? The trailer includes scenes that like the anime is supposed to do, but like they skipped that shit. This isn't the first time, right? Basis Yupin literally said like there's other shit that's happened in the trailers that they just fucking skip. So why the fuck would the trailers include shit? And then the anime director's like, eh, let's just cut that out. It's like, all right, whatever. You fucking teased us. Next up, we have White Day. The night before White Day, we see that Kyo got chocolates for all of the girls who gave him chocolates and because he doesn't want other people to see, he thinks that he's just gonna drop them at their mailboxes. So the next day he wakes up early in the morning and leaves all the chocolates at their mailboxes. But he actually runs into oh. Ichinose who was just coming back from an early morning walk mm -hmm. and after seeing Kyo, she immediately gets flustered once again. Then after checking her mailbox, Ichinose.exe stops working. She found a chocolate and just fucking folded, just collapsed on her knees because Kyo got her a chocolate. She literally turned into a stone for a few minutes. <laughs> okay. After that, they talk about some other stuff and Ichinose mentions that even more class B students are now being harassed by class D. Albert? What's, what are they setting up with Albert? Why are they doing this? And their conversation ends with the return of this. Come to think of it, I didn't catch a whiff of that citrus scent today. I'm used to my <laughs> The citrus scent of Ichinose's hair is is that straight up a fucking light novel meme that just continues? Oh Ichinose, you didn't shampoo today. Citrus perfume. As Kyo wonders why he didn't manage to catch a whiff of it today. I wanna smell that again. Next up, we finally have something that did get adapted, which oh. is the Katsuragi scene. Not scam with the tier one. Two months in a row. I appreciate the man. Thank you for the subscription. One major difference during this scene is that Katsuragi straight up grilling Yukimura. Before <laughs> Yukimura got roasted by Katsuragi? You'll make it to class A someday, hmm? If you ask any other class, they'd say the same thing, replied Katsuragi. Well, but. And if you really do possess the ability to do so, then why don't you try to win against Class A without resorting to underhanded tactics like this? You can't! So you're trying to use me, isn't that right? Said Katsuragi. What the fuck? Baldi! Relax! Relax! Why are you shitting on Keisei like that? Before he lets any information out. And Yukimura also tries to provoke Katsuragi. So in the end, you resort to trying to get a rise out of me by telling me I'm pathetic. You get zero points for negotiations and skills like that, Yukimura. Oh my god. Yo, Keisei should have just called him bald and left. Which did not work at all. Moving on to the Horikita food trap scene. This scene was quite a bit longer in the light novel. This is great because the soundtrack just immediately stopped as soon as Aonokoji took one bite. The chopsticks went down, done. Back to business, right? Because she did this shit in season one. She got us the special lunch set. And then we got baited by the tempura. And then she made us eat it. And then she's like, all right, now you owe me your fucking life. Plus, Horikita tricking Ayano Koji right into hearing her out was quite funny as well. But at least it made it into the anime, I guess. So now, we finally move on to the Koenji moment with Hirata. This scene was yes. handled pretty decently, I guess. And here's the thing, right? Even Mr. Baseless Yupen admits that this scene was handled pretty decently. Here is why my I have like little to no criticism of Classroom of the Elite Season 3 anime. 
It's because, first of all, I don't know anything that's missing from the light novel itself. So it's an anime only. I feel like everything is great. But the most important thing is, I'm very biased against Koenji. My, basically, whether or not an anime episode is good or not is determined by, did Koenji do something and how cool was it, right? And because season three just keeps delivering amazing Koenji scenes, I'm just like so happy. I'm like beyond the fucking moon right now. Like, I'm so excited every time Koenji does something. So, Koenji does something and I ignore everything else of the episode. And Mr. Basis Yupin kind of like breaks down everything that is missing. But again, I've got an in incredibly, incredibly biased perception of what a good episode is because I'm just a Koenji simp. But there are definitely some cool moments which got cut. First up, Koenji well, straight could. up tells Hirata to drop out. If Shut up. You have no idea how I feel, said Hirata. I don't know and I don't care. However, I can make a few guesses. You're going to tell me that you can't simply drop out because it would cause trouble for your class. Hmm, what nonsense. Just fucking drop out, Hirata. He's so broken. Just drop Hirata out. Hirata tells Koenji to shut up, but Koenji sees right through Hirata and knows exactly why he's not dropping out. This is also something the anime fails at portraying. Hirata doesn't actually want to cause any trouble for the class, and he's doing the bare minimum things required, so the class doesn't end up losing points. And I heard that, like, you know, they skipped the thing where Hirata proposed to get himself expelled on, you know, on behalf of everyone else, right? Sorry, the, the last arc, right? Rather him get expelled than someone else get voted out, but they skipped that shit. And the reason he gets so angry at Mishan is because he doesn't want her to bother with him and trying to help him and focus on the class right now, especially because of the upcoming special exam. So the class is more important than me, Chan. I thought that this is just a common uh, behavior of someone that is so depressed and down with themselves. If someone tries to reach out and help, they'll kind of lash out at that specific person because all their hatred and negative energy is suddenly ready to be released. And it just happens that Michan is right in front, right? Does Michan deserve this? No. She's the only one that's kind of reaching out for help. But because that person is right there, the depressed person will lash out on that person. It's an incredibly fucked up thing, but it, it's, it's, it happens quite a lot. Koenji and Hirata's entire confrontation was also being narrated by Kyo, and after a certain point... Ha ha ha, I'm afraid I cannot do that, I've already taken you. Whee! I, I, is this when Koenji picks up Michan? Hirata glared at Koenji's back. Koenji stopped in his tracks, almost as if he had sensed it. Are you unhappy with me, hmm, he asked. Honestly, I wish he would just ignore Hirata at this point. Kilo, Koenji, how does Koji always, like, um... Know where everything is happening. Now, this doesn't need to be explained, but I have noticed that Koji just happens to always... Like, whenever some shit's going down, at the very end, Koji just, like, behind. It's like, watching the entire time. And I'm like, how the fuck does he always know where to be? It, now, you don't have to, like, nitpick and have a justification for why he's there. It's just... It's just... Amazing that he's always there at the right place, the right time, on the most important moments. Bro, it just, he's always fucking there, you know? He even wished that Koenji would stop in the LN after Hirata yeah. leaves. The LN, dude. <laughs> why they, why they hanging Michan's fucking booty cheeks out in the fucking open like this? Koenji actually carries Michan to the dorms. All the way to the dorm, right? There. And then Kyo goes over to talk with Koenji. Did all the girls see Michan get dropped off at the dorms? Because all the girls, they live in like the higher floors, right? Where all the, all the girls are. So I would love to be like, you know, all the girls who witness Koenji walking Michan. They're like, oh my god. Which was completely cut from the anime. Also, Koenji tells Michan that he'll keep an eye on her until she gets <laughs> on the... <laughs> I'll stay here and keep an eye on you until you get to the elevator. All right, said so Koenji. <laughs> said Michan. Is there romance here? I don't think there's romance here, right? I truly believe that Michan doesn't see Koenji like that, or maybe not yet, and Koenji probably just thought that a poor girl was getting harassed for no fucking reason, and he just took his opportunity to fucking flex on Hirata boy and save a girl, you know, a damsel in distress, but like, is there romance between the two? From an anime-only standpoint? I don't think so, right? We have to watch the next episode. Where, are they gonna give a subtle, like, action? If, like, Michan walks over to Koenji's desk or, like, starts talking, I'll be like, okay, we're in. But until that happens, I don't know, man. I don't know. Not just yet. The elevator. This man is such a giga chat, it's insane. He is. He asks Koenji why he tried to provoke Hirata out there. And Koenji replies that 
He didn't do it for the class. Oh, this is fucking long. Now then, did you have some business with me? Hmm, I am a Koji boy. He always calls, you know. He just like does the Donald Trump thing where he brands someone with the nickname to immediately just like stand on top of them. Hirata boy. I am a Koji boy, you know. Red hair kun. Doragon boy, you know. He loves that shit. Why did you call Hirata out like that back there? You're probably just adding fuel to the fire. Or did you think that you were doing it for class's sake? It would seem you would still don't understand me. Hmm? Tsk, tsk. He waved his finger at me. Just, I do not do things for the class. It's like, I only do the things that I want to do. Whether those actions positively or negatively impact their class is nothing more than a byproduct. Just like the yacht exam, huh? Bro just shows up when he wants to and leaves when he wants to, huh? And if the class benefits from his actions, great. Did he intend on the class to benefit? No. As long as he himself benefits, that's all that matters. And he only does things for himself. Now, before- Is Koenji the only person in Classroom of the Elite that Aono Koji can't manipulate? I wonder if Koji's starting to like read Koenji and what kind of like motivates him. And so far, what motivates him seems to be something that's out of our control, huh? It's like- We can't control him because only Koenji controls his own desires because he's so narcissistic. He's such a egocentric narcissist that loves himself. The only way to manipulate him is to have situations that it really favors him. But like, he really can't be controlled, huh? Koenji just really built diff, huh? Before talking about the Hirata bench scene, I first want to talk about the final moment of the episode. Because mm. the Hirata moment is likely going to be a borderline rant at some point. When the class... I'm down for the rant. Let's shit on Hirata boy together. Commanders are waiting for Kaneda. Ryuan is the one who ends up arriving. And his entrance was way more epic in the light novel. What's the matter? What are you all upset for? A wave of uneasiness seemed to wash over Ichinose. Well, actually, neither Sakayanagi nor I had experienced this happen to either. Dude, Doragon Boy coming back raw, unprotected. Because everyone else in the captains, they got the, the, the safe positive votes. But Ryuan, bros going in unprotected. What a giga chad. Especially because he turned into a background character after his defeat in Volume 7. He did. Which was a really, really long time in the light novel. It was so shocking that- Someone unexpected showed up instead. Each Nose looked the most shocked of everyone present when this newcomer entered her field of vision. While Sakayanagi was surprised as well. Her eyes quickly changed to show amusement. Ryuan <clears throat> A wave of uneasiness seemed to wash over each Nose. Her citrus scent could be smelled no more. Well, actually, neither Sakayanagi nor I had expected this to happen. Why is Ryuan showing up like this, unprotected? He didn't have to. He could have just let Kaneda do it, right? What is the reason why Ryuan is stepping up? Did something get reignited when, you know, him and Anakoji were talking near the stairway a couple episodes ago? What? Why? What? What does Ryuan get out of this? Like, I'm really happy he's back. Like, finally, Dragon Boy is fucking back. The fire is back in his eyes. But, like, I guess at the end of the day, it just helps if he's the one leading captain and there'd be more opportunity to get more points. So even if he's more at risk, it's just smarter to do it like that, maybe? That, that's the plan? That even Sakayanagi and Ayano Koji were surprised by Ryuan showing up. And Ichinose was actually scared in the light novel compared to the anime making her seem quite calm. <laughs> then everyone starts to wonder, what's the point Did of this strategy? <laughs> and okay, even okay. Kyo can't imagine, what the hell is Ryuan? Oh, wait, 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 let me read this, let me read Did you, is this a girl speaking? It's a girl speaking. Did you do this to shock me? Even if you did, would it be bad for you guys if Kaneda could get participate? Asked each Nose. While I didn't know everything there was to know about Kaneda, he was at least an asset to Class D. So what was the point of this bizarre strategy which required losing him? That part gnawed at me. When, it had it, uh, when had it been decided that Ryuan would be the commander? Exa when? When did that happen? Was it always the plan? Even before Kanada went to the, you know, the meeting with the captains to pull the cards? If it had been decided right away, did that mean this is all part of the plan? All part of the plan? Did, did, did Ryuan really plan this from the beginning? And even Kyo can't imagine what the hell is Ryuan planning. And Ichinose, on the other hand, you're fighting with your back to the wall, making your last stand. I can't help but have a sinking feeling. Class B might end up losing this. Ichinose, 
Hmm. Don't jinx yourself so far. Is Class B gonna lose? Is 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 Class B gonna drop down and fucking Class? Wait. Well, I still. Why aren't we gonna drop down? Aren't we gonna do that? Did Iona Koji just lie? Am I getting fixated on the time that he said that? Hey, we're gonna go to Class C, and then near the end of first year, we're gonna drop back to Class D by expelling Kushida. But I just don't see a scenario where we expel Kushida. So are we just never gonna drop back down? Is is this time for Class D to go back up? What, what's going on? I I don't know. It starts to feel like Class B might end up losing. And now we finally have the bench scene. First up, when Kyo approaches Hirata, he says that he's probably disappointed Ayano Koji as well. A minute, huh? Well, it's fine. It's not like there's anywhere else I can run that to at the school anyway. I'm too exhausted to run anymore today, but I'm sure I'll just disappoint you too. God damn it, Hirata boy. Get your shit together. Come on. Then, Kyo actually sits down alongside Hirata instead of standing awkwardly and acting edgy like the anime showed. <laughs> Well, I feel like him standing, if he sat down, it would be a lot more empathetic. But him standing in front of him like this, just looking down, I felt like cinematically, it, it, it portrayed a, a more intimidating Anakoji looking down on Hirata, right? It felt more commanding. I, I think that's the direction they were going with it. If Anakoji just kind of sat beside Hirata, it, it, it would have the opposite effect, right? And when Kyo asks Hirata about... I want, to, I want you to tell me your story I told him. Huh? He sounded apathetic. Caught off guard. I was sure he'd been expecting me to impress, uh, express my sympathies. What kind of kid you were, what did you think about then? I want to hear about it. Why? Don't know. Just felt like I wanted to know. I'm having a hard time coming with the reason why. About his past, he's way more chill and says that he just wants to know. Compared to the anime where Hirata asks why he should tell Kyo, and Kyo says that... The reason was, well, then you would have told somebody. And I was like, what? You will. Like, what the hell does that do? Oh. Oh, really? So, some of the, so the subs that he's watching right now, it says, just tell me. I, I'm pretty sure the Crunchyroll subs version that we watched, it says, Hirata said, what do I get out of it by telling you? And then Aoda Koji says, you would have told me. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? And I was like, is he saying like the same thing with Ichinose about the guilt, you know, something pent up. So having someone to, you know, tell someone is like a relief. So... That is like something you get out of this? That, that was my interpretation, but this is making less sense than I'm thinking about it. What even mean? And why does Hirata even answer? Uh, then Kyo starts bringing- I was forcing him to say things he didn't want to say. He had to sound annoyed, like he was aware of what I was doing. You're making me talk about something rough. I'm just curious. If I've offended you, I apologize. It's alright. Hirata let out another sigh, lacking the energy to argue back. He hunched forward, shaking his head, his head side to side. I want you to leave me alone. Please stop caring about me. That's what he was trying to say. Bringing up uncomfortable topics for Hirata, and Kyo can notice Hirata trying to tell him to stop caring about him. Then Kyo asks about his past once again, and even says, "There, there's a lot of passage here, and usually any passage I would probably read it, but I'll let Basis Yu Pen summarize it." Is that deep down Hirata? Fuck Hirata, boy. Probably wanted people to know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, and then Hirata talks about his past. Which was honestly handled pretty decently. I did like that scene, and the yeah. the same with Kyo giving him a reality check. But the thing that pissed me off the most is... Mm -hmm. The anime cutting Kyo's monologue. Which was one of the best moments in the entire series. What was Kyo it? pats Hirata on the shoulder. And as tears roll down Hirata's face. Kyo talks about how men are difficult and frustrating creatures. Who won't let anyone see them cry. And... <sighs> Positive masculinity, Ayano Koji. It's all right. It's all right for you to take the lead, I told him. I patted him on the shoulder with that small impact. More and more tears began to pour out from Hirata's eyes. He was burying the past for good. He set down the heavy burden he'd been carrying all this time. Hirata, who'd been trapped in a place, was now able to stand up. Thank you. Thank you, Ayano Koji-kun. Hirata hung his head low, tears streaming down his face. Men are difficult, frustrating creatures who won't let others see them cry except in special circumstances. Which was exactly why I too wanted the kind of friendship where I could shed tears in front of someone. Has Ayanokoji ever cried in his life? Even as a child in the white room, do you think he wasn't even allowed to cry? I don't know. I doubt he's ever cried, right? It'd be interesting to really think about like a crying Ayanokoji, but you know, men, 
you, you're expected to just be a man, right? Any problem you have, be a fucking man. Stop complaining about your problems, right? You're not a girl. You're not a fucking woman. Don't be a little bitch. Not saying girls are bitches, but this is how men are expected to behave in society, right? So a lot of guys, like, they can never show their emotions. They can never cry in front of other people. They can never be seen vulnerable. I think this is especially true in certain cultures, at least even in, like, Asian culture for me. I don't know. I felt like I was taught to never be a hindrance, never, you know, uh, just, just, just never show vulnerability or weaknesses, right? Keep that shit hidden. I, I feel like there is some positive to that, but at the same time, being able to just, like, let that out and having something to talk to, I think that's incredibly therapeutic. But I think a lot of people just, like, they sign up, they subscribe to this notion that men are just emotionless beings, that you just have to do the sigma grind and then you just kind of continue grinding and, and you, you should never show your tears, but that's so unhealthy. And that notion is kind of slowly changing. And then <laughs> girls on Twitter will then tweet like, hmm, why are you as a man fucking crying? And I'm like, Jesus Christ. That's exactly why he also wanted the kind of friendship where he could shed tears in front of someone. With this absolutely beautiful Damn. illustration. This illustration was completely skipped. The anime really made Arakoji into a cold, ruthless robot, huh? Like, what was... How did he even solve this? Now that I think about it, last episode. Arakoji was standing in front of Hirata. He kind of shit on him. And he just said, get over yourself. Reality check. And then Hirata... What was the turning point when Hirata was like, oh, thank you, Arakoji. Right? Because there, ha there had to be some kind of defining moment where Aonokoji goes, this will do, right? This should do it. But what led to this should do it? Did Hirata just like confess all his fucking problems? And then Aonokoji went and he's like, they're there. And then that was it? Was that really it? Holy shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> so the anime intentionally, and, and, and this is a common behavior, right? We've seen this from season one. Anakoji has been, exactly, he's been completely robotified to be a cold, calculating, ruthless machine. All the human aspects of him are gone. That's a, that's a very intentional direction Anakoji has been doing. And even now, like the direction where he didn't sit aside, he just stood there and he didn't even like give him the monologue or opened up. Light novel Anakoji looks, 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 like, looks like such a bro, huh? He is being such a bro here. But anime Anakoji straight up just said, spread your legs, Hirata. And like, what the fuck? Again, just like direct, it's the director's, you know, cinematic decisions to portray Anakoji being cold, huh? Which is one of my favorites in the entire series. And they dead ass replaced this scene with Kyo standing like an edgelord and yep. saying that she'll yep. do. Yep. And that was their entire point, right? They wanted him to be an edgelord. That's why they did this. Like I'm genuinely furious that anytime Kyo is supposed to have any development in the anime or show emotions, the anime literally replaces it yeah. with he that cuts it should out. do it. Like, what the f Honestly, that should do it is becoming a meme line. I kind of enjoy it. I was like, oh shit, he said that again. But truly, the anime, like the studio lurch, they don't give a fuck about Anakoji's human aspects, huh? They just want him to be a ruthless, like emotionless robot. What does that even mean? And the worst part is the fact that in all 26 plus volumes of Classroom of the Elite, Kyo has never said that line. Ever. What? This is anime only? That shit do it as anime only? That's insane. The <laughs> so the anime director, whoever is in lead of Class of the Elite anime, straight up was like, you know what? Kiyo never had this catchphrase, but I'm going to fucking self-insert my headcanon and he's going to have this catchphrase. <laughs> he, he really did that, huh? Is this the same person that uh, loves Susanae? Remember the person in season one that, you know, had made Susanae into like the main character? Yo, so, <laughs> this guy is, this guy, the anime director is making the anime into his own fucking fan fiction, dude. What the fuck? And the anime just decided to add it. This will do. He saved, then after he gave her the cold medicine. <laughs> this will do. Went to that room, should do it. Yeah, now, yeah. It also ruined one of the best moments in the entire series. Dude, I didn't even know this wasn't in the light novel. I thought this was a critical line. I thought that's why they kept reiterating this line over and over again. I'm like, huh, must be an important catchphrase of Anakoji. It's like, nope, never existed. What? What the fuck? Like, words cannot describe how much I hate this anime adaptation. Hey, it's Kushida Ryun again. Especially because they ruined Hirata's character as well. 
the anime makes it seem like Hirata cares about Yamauchi in particular. Yeah, when why? That isn't the case at all. Thank fucking God, because that made no fucking sense. I don't care about the whole bystander trigger PTSD. We already talked about that. Yamauchi being gone has no fucking one-to-one -one comparison with what happened in the past. You can't tell me that he got fucking triggered by being a bystander and having someone leave like that. You had to make three fucking lots of jumps. It's, uh, that was so fucking dumb. Unlike Ichinose, who cares about every single person in the class equally and would do anything to protect them. Yeah, but because each of those class actually matters. Every one of the B-class students are such fucking normies. You want to protect them all because they're all nice, wholesome people. Our class is a bunch of fucking shitters. Rata doesn't care about the people in the class. He, he cares about the fucking structure and like the way the leadership is handled, right? It doesn't matter if it was Yamauchi or not. It could have been Iki that was gone. He would have acted the same. He cares about the class as a whole yeah. and wants to keep it together because of his guilt of not being able to keep his previous class together. It's about the principle, not about who was sent out. It's not specific somebody. It's, it's about the principle. Compared to Ichinose, who's a genuinely good person and helps people out of the kindness of our heart. Baseless Yupin has now confirmed that Hirata is not a genuinely good person. <laughs> I'm kidding. Obviously, Hirata doesn't secretly hate everyone like Kushida, but he's only trying to keep the class together for himself and not because he cares about someone like Yamauchi. And that is the very interesting way that a selfless character like him is a very selfish character, right? Listen to what he just said. Keep the class together, secretly hate everyone like Kushida, but he's only mm -hmm. trying to keep the class together for himself. Exactly. Does he actually care about individual people in the class? Not really. It's about the principle of having that bystander effect and having a roboticized you know, class to not happen again, right? And not because he cares about someone like Yamauchi. Yeah. Along with making Kyo edge here and replacing his monologue with that should do it. <laughs> this became one of my least favorite episodes this season, despite being one of the best episodes this season. You know what Mr. Baseless Yupin should do? He should, you know, at the end of each video, he, exactly, he should say that should do it. After shitting on the anime, he should say that should do it and end it. I, I think that would be fucking amazing. In terms of visuals. But yeah, that's pretty much all the cut content and changes for this episode. That should do it. Along with my borderline rant. That should do it. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. That should do it. Consider subscribing to the no, channel come for on. more Classroom of the League <sighs> and just anime content. Close, close, close. He almost, maybe next time he will, but that should do it from me, guys. Go give Mr. Basis Dupin a like. Subscribe to the channels if you like. He always gives us such great context about the stuff that's missing. God damn, this is a fucking, almost a 40 minute video off of a fucking 11 minute video. But uh, again, I'm incredibly biased towards Classroom of the Elite. If Koenji is doing something, I'm just going to glaze that episode. I won't, I won't even recognize that shit's missing. But understanding that, you know, some scenes like the Hirata, you know, Aona Koji sitting together on a bench thing. That was a big fucking L. That was a huge fucking L. How the anime decided that they wanted to fucking make Aona Koji into a fucking cringe edge lord and have him look down on him instead of having like a wholesome brotherly moment saying, you know, men are allowed to cry. This would have been so beautiful, but I don't know. The, the anime fucking director is like, <laughs> that should do it, I guess. And that should do it.